Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to lesson number six of our Planet Coaster Realism Top Tip series. And today we're talking about coaster stations. So not necessarily about how you build them, but how you configure them to be as realistic as you can. So let's get started. All right, so we're back at the wooden coaster and I've actually stopped it from running because it does get a little bit loud from the previous episode. You know that already. And just like the other episodes, we're going to run through the basic and the pro levels where the basic gives you all of the tools that you need without using Theme Maker's Toolkit so that your new players and console players actually stand a chance of being able to uh, have a realistic experience. And then we'll certainly ramp it up using Theme Maker's Toolkit later on so first thing to look at when you're doing your your coaster station then is not about how you're going to build it and how you're going to theme it it's about the layout that you've got so you typically need to have some kind of end break run and there is no right or wrong answer with with this remember um it's completely down to you how you're running your coasters how you're running your park how you want to have your capacity running but you're going to need some kind of break run uh, that leads into the coaster that break run needs to be uh, access accessible by some kind of catwalk up to you whether you uh, build your catwalks yourselves or whether you just use the in-game ones the in-game ones are perfectly fine um, then of course you're going to have your coaster station set up in some capacity so you're going to have your queues and you're going to choose whether you're going to have uh, exit and entrance on the same side, whether you're going to have it on the opposite sides, whether you're all going to have it the other side. You know, that's completely up to you to choose. Um, and then you're going to have access to the lift hill. Now, you don't always have to have your lift hill coming straight out of the station. Many, many, many coasters have got some kind of turn or drop or whatever into a lift hill. Just make sure, though, that your lift hill is still accessible from a catwalk. So if you are going to have some kind of uh, connection or bend around from a station make sure that there's either a catwalk or access to the station from the lift hill or to an emergency point sometimes if you've got a drop you can't put a catwalk in but as long as your lift hill has got access to an emergency exit that comes out to a path that's absolutely fine you don't then need a catwalk in in the middle so have a look at some of the povs from some of your favorite coasters griffin at bush gardens williamsburg for example is really good really good example of how you can have a first drop with no need for a catwalk because the lift hill uh, exit is onto a is onto a path so the next thing then we need to do and this is where you need to start trading off the game versus reality we need to start building on your station so I've already said that this uh, this episode is not going to be about how you decorate your station. That's completely up to you. Um, that's up to your own imagination to do that. Uh, but we're just going to talk about the configuration of the station. So in this instance, we need to have some kind of uh, base and foundation for your for your station. So on this one, I am just going to use the rough concrete. Uh, I think it works just as well. So if we go rough, uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a base. Like this, I'm going to create a base like this, and then I'm going to use uh, this piece here just to cap it off, but I also need to remember to do the inside as well, so you can see in here that we've got this sort of like gap, this space, so I'm just going to take the 2 meter high, and I'm going to reduce the grid size a little bit more, and I'm actually going to continue to fill in this space and this will become evident why I'm doing this later on um, but just remember that most stations are not hollow underneath they're, bu they're built on some kind of concrete foundation there we go and then the other thing that I need to do is just take the flat roof uh, concrete flat roof so this one here and I'm gonna need to build a base out so that I can't see the grass underneath it so now this is very clearly built on some kind of concrete base you can use bricks on the outside you can use uh, something decorative you know something that looks a, li a little bit better totally totally up to you um, but for, for me this is my this is my preferred way of doing it uh, for this kind of coaster especially if you're dealing with like lower budget and everything so the next thing we need to do then is start to consider the layout of the station and, and how that's going to work so once you've decided uh, what side you want your queue and what side you want your exit you need to make sure that you've got appropriate access to it so your queue line needs to have some kind of entrance strategy here and your exit needs to have some kind of strategy as well whether that exit is this side and it comes underneath the lift hill or whether it's the same side but you need to you need to remember at this instance about the sabled access 
So this one here is a particularly bad setup because I've only got stairs that are accessing this at the moment. So I'm going to need to address this. So I'm going to take away this path. I'm going to take away that path. And I'm going to put it back to concrete. Make sure that my flattened terrain is off. And I'm going to just change that to a ramp. So now you do have some kind of disabled access. Um, you may consider putting in a lift uh, in, in this instance. Like this is high enough that you'd probably justify a lift. But the ramp is just about acceptably long enough and at about the right angle for uh, disabled access. So you should be okay with, with this kind of strategy. So the next thing then to consider in your station uh, is about your operator. So where does your operator live now there is a mod out there if you want to use it that actually removes the station completely so you can actually completely customize your station uh, i personally am not using it at the moment i've tested it doesn't quite do what i want it to do for the stuff that i want to produce but i know that there are some people out there dutchy for example absolutely awesome work using this using this mod some of the pictures and screenshots are absolutely awesome uh, so our control panel we have to we have to sort of think about where this is going to live now you don't ha you're not stuck to just having one by the way you can have multiples so if you wanted to decorate this area you can do that and then you can do a fake control panel elsewhere uh, or control booth elsewhere so that you could say that you've got one either side of the track but ultimately you're going to need to decorate it right and how you do that again it's completely up to you uh, this could be a good opportunity to um, actually start to use windows as walls uh, I <laughs> This is the second take of this, and the first time I did this, I did something really cringe, and I might actually edit it back in. Windows as walls. Gangster, right? So, windows as walls. You see this quite a lot with um, other players, and you'll see it quite a lot in other YouTubers. And I actually, I'm sold on the idea. Like, I really, really like doing it. So, the idea of windows as walls is that rather than using the pieces that you get as a standard for the walls, you actually get some really awesome examples of things that you can do just using windows so for example if i wanted a concrete looking uh booth then i can do that like so or if i wanted to use wood then i can also do that uh, i have plenty of wood that i could use so let's just get rid of those and put wood in and you've seen me do this in raygate lake quite a lot like the stand-up coaster for example uses windows as rules for the control booth um so i'm just going to Make this a building of its own so it's easier to edit and manipulate. And then I'm just going to copy this down even further. I'm going to move this around. I'm going to go this way. And it's again, it's up to you whether you try and hide the gates that are here, how big you make the control booth, how you theme it. It's all up to your own imaginations. Um, there is, like I say, my favourite phrase, no right or wrong answer. Um, but what I do do with these windows as walls, as you can see, the one side is, of course, still a window. <laughs> so uh, we just need to hide the fact that it's a window. We just turn it around like that. And now you've got a wall. Um, sometimes you see some Z fighting, um, which is fine. Sometimes if you move it, it'll it'll fix it. And sometimes it, it, it doesn't. Uh, and you just have to live with it. But let's just go with that for now. So as part of the control booth then, you need to also remember that this guy here, is a guy? Yeah, this guy here uh, needs access to see up the lift hill. They need a clear run of the lift hill. They need a clear uh, view of the station. And they also need, uh, where possible, a, a clear view of the, of the queue area as well. And also behind them in the uh, disabled area. So we need to build in some kind of windows. Uh, ironically, we actually need windows. So... I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple of beams. So, uh, cho choice of beams. I'm just going to choose this one, right? Um, I'm just going to bring this along here. So this now gives me a bit of a better building framework. Um, and this is actually probably too, way too tall, right? So let's go ahead and sink that down slightly. I'm going to bring this out this way and now I can start to do my back wall so let's just copy this and go this way so we are now pretty much enclosing 
enclosing this poor guy, right? So we're going to need to inc include some kind of a door. So let's find ourselves a nice door. Let's go for this one, shall we? Because it seems to fit the fit the theme. So uh, because of the width of this one, we could probably get away with not doing a wall in this area. Um, if you wanted to do away with it, it's absolutely fine. But if you've got a wider wall, so if you're bringing it out here and to out here, you're probably going to want to put the door in as well. Just make sure for realism that you put the door at the front and you just clip it through the back as well. Just so that you it's very obvious that there is a door there. Uh, so, I'm going to carry on with these two and bring the wall up here. And I'm going to bring the wall up here. And then just to frame off this area, I'm going to put in this bit here. Okay, and then I just need to give it a roof. Um, so, for this one, I would probably choose something along the lines of the... Uh, flat arch shapes. Something like that. This is probably a bit too big, actually. This is going to be a piece too big, so let's go for one smaller. Um, we can do some kind of overhang, and we can colour it black. Black and brown tend to go well. Uh, we go like this. Like this. And like this. And so what we've, what we've got there is a really, really basic control panel, control booth, right? Um, it does what it needs to do. And when we, when we look at the Theme Makers Toolkit, we'll look at some of the things that you would actually typically find in here. But you can start to clutter this out with some of that back of house stuff that we were using before. So knowing full well um, that they would have boxes. So you can use the studio's boxes in here. They would have some kind of filing cabinet they would have probably a rope let's put a rope in um i'm kind of clutching at straws as to the things that we can use <laughs> uh but yeah you've got loads of stuff within the actual game itself that you can put in here so think of it as being a little bit of a mini office space you would have filing cabinets you'd have files that they would use they'd have training records they would have radios and cbs and, and all of that sort of stuff um so that's your, uh, that's your real basic booth. If you're wanting to give it a bit more jaunt to it, because the uh, art shapes are actually a little bit thicker, um, you can get away with tilting them slightly, just so it's not so flat. It just gives a bit of, just that little bit of character to it. Uh, there you go. So you've now got a bit of bit of a slant to it and if you're doing an open air station this is quite handy because now the rain's gonna uh, gonna run off right so uh, so now we've got the control booth we now need to think about the staff that you're going to have operating this ride so typically what you'll tend to find is that you'd have a staff member either side of the platform and the number of staff that you need depends completely on the trains that you're operating, the length that you're operating, and the manufacturer. So this one, for example, would probably only have four platform staff. You'd have two at the front here, and you'd have two at the back here. Um, and the idea is that this person that's in this area here would check these rows up to about here, and then the person that's at the back would be checking these rows. And likewise, then, the people that are this side would be doing the equivalent for this side of the train. Same applies to B&Ms where you've got four seaters. The difference is this person would be responsible for the two seats this side. This person responsible for the two seats the other side. Does that make sense? Uh, so there's, there's a way that you can represent staff. And again, you've seen me do it in Raygate Lake. But this does require access to things like the Studios Pack. Um, you have a whole range of animatronic people that are available to you. So if you're on console, you're starting to get hold of... Spooky Pack and Adventure Pack. So if you are doing an adventure theme, you should have access to, I believe, the Archaeologist. But it's said as a stuntman, so that might actually be Studios. Um, but either way, let's use the Western one as, a, as an example. Now, that's Pirate. That's definitely not the right one. So uh, I'm just going to turn a line to surface off. Um, and I'm going to sink the person into the platform like this. So I'm going to say there's my one member of staff there, there's my one member of staff there, there's my one member of staff there, and 
I remember stuff there. Now remember to mix your stuff up for device diversity. Um, they're not all going to look the same. They're not all going to be white males wearing masks. Um, remember that when you do dealing with your with your park, make it as diverse as you possibly can. Uh, but now you've got the staff that are actually represented on here. Uh, you are going to need their push points. So they're going to be able to check the restraints and then they need to give the all clear to the control booth to say yes, that the train is train is ready to go. Um, and there's multiple props that you can that you can use to do this. The most obvious one uh, is that control panel that we used from before. Uh, I don't remember what it's actually called though. Um, let me go back over to here. I oh, know we deleted it, didn't we? Oh, okay, so sci-fi. Uh, it's one of these. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh no, you guys! It's happened again. This is this has become an episode of watching me go through everything. There it is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> So, like, you could use... It's not really realistic. This is where Theme Maker's Toolkit really does come into it. But you can use these, if you like. Um, and if I just... I'm just going to put that there for a second. So I can go and take one of the pillars. Not that one. That one. Uh, just move it round like this. I'm going to take this one move it up like so and then whoops take those two put them together now I can move that as a as a unit and you can now start to include it here like I say it's not the most realistic way of doing it but it's a way that you can represent having the push buttons on the station platform so that you know that the staff have got to authorize that that train is ready to go um, if you're wanting to go really extreme you can then also use the art shapes and you can start to uh, draw out lines that match these that are on the floor so if I go ahead and take uh, the smallest square that we've got uh, turn my uh, line to surface on make it yellow there we go and I can then draw out space like this. There we go. Okay. So this is particularly important when you have coasters that would leave the station rapidly. So think of your launched coasters where they launch from the station, your, your Interman ones typically, um, or your booster bikes. So the idea is that the, all of the staff members have to be accounted for in a safe zone before that train is allowed to move. Nobody on the station is allowed to be moving, or on the platform should I say, is allowed to be moving along the platform whilst that train is in motion. Um, and so what you're doing here is you're creating that safe space to say, as long as that staff member is confined to that area, um, then the train the train can move. But the second that, that tra the person steps out of that area, that the, the ride must be e-stopped because it becomes a danger. You'll often see on launch coasters that uh, the staff are put behind physical air gates that move. And you can recreate those in game as well using your uh, fences. So if I wanted to take uh, one of these, for example, I could actually physically fence off the people, uh, my staff. So let's just say, for example, it would look a bit like that and like that so this would now stop the staff members from physically moving into the ride uh, area whilst that train is actually in motion so the next thing we need to consider when it comes to the station is fire exits how are you going to evacuate the station in an emergency so in this instance we're we're kind of okay because We've got everybody that's just all on the one side. So all of our queue and our exit are all on the one side. So people would either come back down the queue to this point here, um, where they would then have an escape gate, uh, which would then lead people into the plaza, or they can leave via the exit and come out 
the plaza this way and then you're actually moving people away from the ride as, as quickly as possible the only thing that we would now need to consider is how we're going to get our staff members across so what you will typically find in this instance where you don't have any public access this side is the staff members would cross in an emergency either across the track um, or across the across the train if there's space and you'll see them use a hand signal that looks like a T um, and there's a timeout signal so it, it signals to the control operator that uh, they intend to cross the track and they intend to in enter the ride area so that the ride goes into lockdown whilst they whilst they do that so you don't need to necessarily worry about a path coming from this side because it's not publicly accessible but you do just need to consider how you're going to evacuate this part of the station um, and that's why we've got this gap here because we can put a fence in and why we've got the ramp down here as, as well so that's your fire exit sorted uh, we've talked about disabled access because we've changed the uh, changed it out to a ramp so <laughs> the other thing to consider uh, is how your station actually physically operates this is going to be a complete mess of um, electrics and framework and all sorts of stuff so we now need to start kitting it out with that kind of clutter so let's go ahead and find a really badly spelt cable there we go uh, and we're gonna go into our cable here I'm just going to align it to surface and we, uh, what you typically tend to find uh, is all of your cables and everything would run underneath the station. Um, and there would be some kind of clearance underneath that uh, a maintenance worker or somebody would be able to crawl underneath and, and service everything along here. Uh, so I'm just going to put one here, one here. Uh, just like everything else, I'm going to make it a building so that we can edit it nice and easily. It obviously needs to have an end, so it would have some kind of um, control booth or control panel. I can use an art shape for that. Uh, so let's do that. Let's. That grinding sound is horrible. <laughs> really, really is. Um, oh no, I tell you what we could use, actually. Um, there's a sci fi panel. Uh, sci fi. One of these. Well, no, that's too big. That's not going to work. Uh, I mean, we could use we could use this one again, I guess, if we wanted to. Just reuse the same piece. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's fine. That'll do. Um, and then we just need to then copy this across, and then go across again and then again and one last time there we go and now we just need to decide what we're going to do with the rest of the cable so uh, are we going to then take it up so that it's actually connecting to something um, in which case we would take it up from this point uh, maybe we might bring it across this way and bring it up this way and connect here and then uh, bring this down again and this way and this is the point where we don't need to be afraid of clipping because we've got this space in here right we can't we can't see it it's a void so we can just bring it out Obviously, if we go any further, it's going to clip out of the out of the side here. Um, but what we can do is we can bring it out so it no longer clips. And we can bring this to here. And then we can, if you wanted to do it as a double cable, we can do it as a double cable. So now it kind of serves a purpose. This, this underneath is now actually being served buy something um, and then we can also copy it across if we if we so wish uh, to the next to the next one I think this is the next one isn't it there we go and then just bring that up here like that so we've, we're now kind of starting to um, give this impression that the that the underneath of the station isn't just sat there 
like it is in game and um, we're actually starting to give it a little bit of purpose now some roller coasters particularly steel ones or steel tracked ones are also going to have under station heaters so you might consider putting those in um, and all I do in this instance is I just use uh, the studios floodlight that comes with it move it upwards connect it to my cable and color it red but because it's a um, uh, because it's a heater not a light uh, it, I would do it as a really dark red so if I just change this to a M uh, no sorry PM I would change it so that it's a really dark red rather than the light red so you make it a dark red. And the idea of this then is when the uh, when the track and the trains are particularly cold. Uh, that's actually too far. Um, when the track and the trains are actually really cold, the idea is that this then starts to heat up the lubricants and start to heat up the heat up the oil and the wheels so that the train runs better. And they do this particularly where a train is at risk of valleying um, around the around the track. So what you then have is the is the heater underneath. You probably wouldn't use it on a wooden coaster for obvious reasons. Um, you don't particularly want a fire, <laughs> if you can help it. Uh, but yeah, so you tend to find that sort of stuff. Cons so you just need to carry on kitting out the underneath of your station with some of the equipment that you may find. And you can use the principles that we used over here for what you would find un underneath the station. Think of the clutter. You might put a barrel or two down there. You might put a cone down there that someone's left. Um, you don't need to go OTT because as you can see, you don't even see it, right? This just gives that different level of realism. It gives it a sub level of realism that you might not necessarily see it, but it's subliminal. It's, you know, you know that it's there. Um, and the other last thing to consider then about your signs. So you're going to need some kind of an exit sign. You're going to need some kind of a queue here sign um, and baggage hold. So if you want your, your coasters to have some kind of a baggage hold, then that needs to be a strategy that's somewhere. So you may consider putting that here. So let's bring all of this together and let's see what this station would look like fully configured. All right then, so I've just spent a couple of minutes throwing up a surround to the station just so you can get a feel for how it would look with an actual cover and everything on. Um, so let me take you through everything that, that's been done. So you can see that all of the stuff we built in the previous step is all there. Um, everything is, is still in place. I've just made a few movements, so like I've moved the stuff closer to the front of the station here. Um, as part of the surrounds, I've just used the technique for uh, the chimneys. So all you do is you just... Uh, take the chimney and you turn it upside down and you've got an awesome brick foundation surround that you can use. Uh, so I'm just putting that in here. Um, I've given it some steps coming down from the station. Uh, same technique I used in the previous episode. So there's nothing new there, just different textures. I've just used a wood beam and the uh, the planks from the haunted house set, the um, spooky pack set. And then on the outside here, I've just added some some control panels. So you'd have some kind of maintenance area that's at the bottom of the station. Um, and so I've just added that in here. And then this is the access that would come down to uh, come down to this area, right? Um, I've made sure that it's gated off so that you can't actually get down because this would be a live ride area. So engineers and everything would only be allowed down here if the ride was confirmed to have been stopped. Uh, I've then put some fences around just so that we can fence off the, the queue from the actual main station. And um, put some signs at the back here for no exit. So uh, you can see clearly there's there's no way of the public getting over to this side. And then you've got your exit sign sitting here. Uh, your bags, I've just made up um, some kind of a bookshelf. Again, it's using the same planks from the, from the spooky set. I've just thrown the planks together in a bookshelf pattern. Uh, but this would be where you would leave all of your baggage um, and everything. And then I've also just added in some lights as well. Same technique we used in the previous episode. Nothing new there. Just the cable um, that goes across the, the ceiling and then the lights sticking out. But because we're using the, the westerny type theme, it felt like we needed to use the, the western style lanterns. Um, so this is pretty much how it all looks when you're just using basic items. Um, I think it's probably time to kick it up a gear, right? Let's have a look at Theme Maker's Toolkit. All right, so we already know the power of Theme Maker's Toolkit items, TMTK. Uh, we saw that in the last episode. So what I've done is I've gone along and I've put all of my Theme Maker's Toolkit items that I tend to use in a station under a tag in both the building 
and the scenery tabs. Uh, so station here. Uh, there we go. So let's just tackle them one by one, right? Let's just let's just go down my list. So the first thing I do when I'm doing this bit uh, are the emergency signs. So here they are. Um, I just need to make sure that I'm directing people to the right place in the event of an emergency. Um, so you can put them either on this back wall here, if we so wish, uh, or we can put it on the pillar. Um, but as long as they are visible to people, uh, then that's fine. So we just one there. And then we just put the down arrow one on the side where the actual exit is. So we're now just pointing people in the right in the right direction. So the next thing I then do uh, is wherever I've got this concrete, I like to age it if I want to give the idea that the ride is particularly old. So these dirt decals, 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 um, are absolutely perfect for it because it gives the idea that the water and everything has sort of like run off the side and it's stained the concrete. So I'm just going to go along and just add these in. And there's a there's a couple of them as well. So you've got different levels of filth and grime that you can use. Um, and then you've also got upwards ones as well. So if you want to give the idea that the uh, the mud is also splashing up as well. I tend to though not use those ones because you can see that there's that, that ugly line under certain light conditions whereas at least at the top here I can I can hide this um, particularly if I'm using a plank to or a beam or something to hide this this unsightly join like as I said I just thrown this station together it's not about the decor of the station right um, and then we've also just got this this other awesome one as well um, which is just general scuzz um, so it just gives the idea then that the actual uh, the actual concrete is starting to starting to age and probably not very well um, but just gives it that real element of element of realism and element of scuzz. So the next thing then I do uh, is to consider whether I'm going to change out my lights. Um, so if I if I do, then fine. Because this is a Western theme, I'm going to keep these lanterns in. But I've already saved in light bulbs and lampshades and everything that I could swap this out for. Um, and then inside scenery, I've also got a cable that I could swap it out as well. Because the, these are quite chunky, right? And they're quite detailed. And sometimes you just want a cable. So um, I've got exactly that, just a cable. Um, which is this one here can't really see that very well can you let me just pull it out so you can there you go it's just a nice plain cable that i like to run across the uh, run across the beams just gives that slightly more like um tidy feeling as if you're tidying tidying the place up now your uh, station should have cctv um and it's up to you how you do that, whether you do that as the physical cameras um, or whether you use domes. I like to use domes um, because they're a bit more discreet. So we're going to need to put a dome in here, like so. And I like to connect it up with the cable as well. So I can say, actually, this, this cable that's along here, as chunky as it may be, is also... Whoa, hello. <laughs> Come back. Uh, is also serving... Um, this camera as well and I always I well what is wrong with this camera um I always like to put in a couple of cameras so that you can see this down now the th next thing to consider is that these cameras need a monitor somewhere so this is where we go back to our control booth um, and I'm just going to grab myself a TV screen um, and I'm just going to grab the small TV screen and I'm going to place it in the booth somewhere um, now, we don't have the, the facility to do proper CCTV monitors, so I just use the TV screens. And then sometimes if I've got the patients, I'll create an image to put in there that's of a, of a CCTV. You kind of want it to be in an area that they can see it. So you'll also will have seen it in Raygate Lake that I would put it up here. And um, so it's above the person's head. So it would look a little bit like... The, no, that's, a, that's the person. A little bit like this. So I would bring it up to here obviously no that's actually probably going to be okay um they can still see they can still see out uh and then just move this round so that it's actual wood like that and then put the screen above the person's head so they can now see that um that that cctv is 
working and you can link and you can link it up now whilst we're in the control booth other things to consider uh, it's going to need plug sockets so in the uk we have these you know, the americans amongst us will think that we've got weird plug sockets but we think yours are weird so there um <laughs> it's just offend half of my audience <laughs> uh i don't mean it really um so yeah i just put some plug sockets in just to make it obvious that uh it's some kind of office space right and um, so I just put those those plug sockets in and that's pretty much it for building wise I then move across to scenery items this is where we've got by far the most wealth um, of stuff and you, you can see on here like I say this, this is not even an exclusive list of stuff the theme makers toolkits are just so vast and so wide and um, so we're already in uh, we're already in here in our control panel. Come on, what is wrong with this camera? Come on. Behave, play nicely. There we go. Um, so, we, we we need to treat this a bit like an office space. So, let's go ahead and put a bin in. We just need to turn the aligned surface off. Uh, there we go. So, I'm just going to put a bin in by the door. Just trip over it. Needs fire extinguisher. Um, I'm very aware that this is probably supposed to be hanging on a wall uh, but I'm just going to put it on the floor um, there we go because we're going renegade <laughs> fire extinguisher on the floor let's break some laws uh, I'm going to put filing cabinet in um, just oh, by the way these um, spaces they really are this cramped in real life um, they are a nightmare in mean, some of the uh, some of the actual cab cabins that we have so they gen genuinely genuinely are this this cramped um and i do also like to cover up items that i've already placed with other items because you find this in real life it's that subliminal layer of realism again it's the you move a filing cabinet and you will find a plug behind it so i, I like to do that sort of thing i did it all through raygate lake so if you've got the park downloaded you'll be able to move stuff and you'll see that i've put stuff behind it because that's just how it goes um we need a chair so let's put in a nice chair for them to sit down uh have i still got a line yeah i've still got a line to surface on there we go so put a chair for them to sit down need some kind of paper inbox trays um of course we need the fire exit point or the fire push point and they're by the door uh, aligned to surface so we're going to put that in there um, and we've got what else we've got some boxes I'm not going to put any more clutter in here this feels like it's already a bit claustrophobic um, might put a broom the oh a clock definitely need a clock uh, so let's go ahead and put a clock in up here so just make sure my snap is on and then go across here like so need to tell people that this is staff only so we put our staff only sign on um we need possibly actually to put a phone in now you will tend to find i'm just going to get rid of one of these actually uh, you'll tend to find that they will all of the the cabins will have some kind of access to a phone um, and all of the parks are actually well connected they're normally connected by either a phone with an internet connection and a landline um, or by radio so uh, yeah put the phone in and then we also want to have on here our disabled access sign so we need to tell uh, our disabled guests how they can get on so we're just going to put the disabled access sign here uh, we also need uh, some other where is it um, Oh, the regulations, that's it. Uh, regulations on paper. So you'll tend to find that there will be somewhere stuck up in an office. In fact, they've got it, they've got them here, look, on, on here. They would have some kind of paper-based regulations or whatever that would be health and safety um, inspection stuff that uh, would be up on the wall here. Because this is officially an enclosed space, uh, you'd want to make sure that at the entrance of them you have, you know, some open signs for the UK. Uh, so, and that's both sides there. And also, uh, that's probably overkill. The, the two would be 
two would be fine. Um, if you are expecting your guests then to put their baggage in, you need to tell them so. Um, so there would be a no loose articles sign. Uh, so we are going to put it upside down, shall we? Uh, no loose articles uh, beyond this point. And then you might consider swapping out your bag sign for one of the in-game ones. So there is a baggage sign somewhere. There we go. Baggage. Uh, my cur is this my yeah, this one's a my curious mind. Um, so again, there are different variations of baggage hold signs and no loose article signs and and stuff. Um, I mean, you might also decide that the in-game one was was perfectly was perfectly fine. So, your guests need bins. Um, and this is not something that we can easily do on the basic level because we don't have the ability to place bins on queue line paths. So, I'm just going to take the same bin cover that we've used elsewhere uh, on, this, on this build. Uh, and we're just going to place it at the entrance of the queue. So, uh, I like to fill in these, these unsightly gaps, by the way, with bins uh, rather than doing it with fences. Um, so, we're just going to put the bin in here uh, very aware that it's floating on the let's do that there we go uh, and then I also put one the other side here just because it gives a bit of depth and a bit of purpose to this back end um, because it's just empty look so nice I like to put a bin in here and then if I've got the exit the other side I'll put a bin near the exit um, but because we've got one here, I'll put one here. There we go. Um, cool. So, what else do we need in this area? Um, tend not to clutter up this area. You need to keep it as, as clear as you can. So no brooms, no boxes. Um, you may consider putting another fire extinguisher down. And I would put one this side. Um, purely because... If there is a, a need for one on this side, we don't have one at the moment. So I'm just going to align that to surface. And uh, sorry, fire safety people. It's on the floor again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right, so now we need to start thinking about these. No, no not these. Uh, these boxes that we made because we can now swap them out. Um, and we have ourselves the push points that we can actually use. Two options that we've got. Um, and these are great, such great detail. Uh, let's just go like this. Two options that we've got then. Uh, we can either uh, use the smaller one, uh, which these are the these are the typical ones that you would find. Um, they're they're per they're perfectly acceptable. Is that upside down? Yeah, that's upside down. Let's uh, put them the right way round, shall we? There we go. Uh, so there or we can use this one slightly bigger uh, so I'm going to put the smaller one at the back because it's just a, a supporting push point but this one at the front uh, because oh, it's, at the, it's at the front of the front of the train um, I'm just going to move that back like that uh, cool, okay, so we need to replace the other side, but I'm going to do that um, off camera in a second because uh, this isn't really a spectator sport. Uh, okay, so we need to just address this bit down here because we've now got other things that we can use. So let's go ahead and get rid of the sci-fi stuff that we put in to represent things. And now let's replace it with actual proper, th proper things. Uh, so let's spin this round and it's now an actual proper cabinet. There we go, so we're going to do one, two, and I'm just going to select those, copy them again. Don't forget these need cables running to somewhere, and I like to represent it by going into the ground. And this is where we can call in the cable that I showed you from before, um, and just clip it through like so. Um, if you are a bit lazier, absolutely fine. There is also this one that you could use. Um, that's available on the workshop does just as good a job um, I mean look at it it still looks authentically cool right uh, don't forget though you're going to need your electric signs 
Um, up to you whether you do one per box or whether you do one for the, that covers the... Well, well that's the floor. Um, one that covers the area. So, other things then that we might consider putting into uh, the station would be your height markers. So, remembering that uh, the ride hosts will need to check people's height. So, let's just say on this one that we need to choose between uh, the 1.4 metre full-on thrill ride or whether we've got the family uh, style thrill ride. So, we're going to put those in. Um, we also need to uh, put in some other disabled signs. So we're going to say this one comes up here. Uh, so it's grey, red, like that. There we go. Uh, our other disabled sign then uh, is this one. So we're just going to say your disabled access where's the entrance your disabled access is that way other thing that i i like to do and i did this in raygate quite a lot as well is using this sign and the q arrow like that so two two ways that you that you can really do it um cool so i think that's pretty much the the main the main bulk of everything um under the station you could do the same um, so we can swap these out for proper electric boxes, uh, swap these out for proper cables make, and make this look a little bit tidier. So let me do this off camera and we will come back and have a look at how this is going to turn out. Here we go then, needs a little bit more love and care and attention than a hastily thrown together how-to video but it's done. It's kitted out with the Maker's Toolkit so let's do our final tour. So uh, just a few touching up things along here, um, added in one of the control panels, um, made sure that this is all this is all right. Um, underneath the station, oh I added in a control panel here as well um, because this would operate or help to operate the brake run in this kind of area. Um, underneath the station um, I swapped out the cables for actual electric cables, um, did the same with the underneath the um, tire drives and everything and scuzzed it out um, so made sure that I've placed that dirt down randomly remember that the water and everything would have dripped in here and it stains the concrete particularly if it's an old ride this thing would be a mess so I've just stained it out and made this grubby um, so I've also done uh, touching up in the actual station area itself added in some of the signage so remembering that the other side of this fence is the ride area so you need your danger of death ride area signs and I've also just put in the no entry sign down here as well um, just so that you know that it's a, an actual gate uh, my staff have all been tidied up they now have their relevant push points one either side here and then they've got the same either side here um, I've just added the cables in so again it's just a great use to use or great opportunity to use those smooth cables so I've just always make sure that the cable runs somewhere so it goes underneath the station so it's connected to something sometimes parks will make an effort to hide them and um, most of the time you'll you'll actually see it though and then I've also just added in a control panel this side as well um, just in case the engineer happens to be working uh, down in this area along the um, electrics and everything down here they they don't have to then cross the track go into the control panel to actually move the trains and stuff they can actually do that from uh, from this area here um, and then I've also added in just some catwalk CCTV um, I wasn't go I wasn't going to but I decided to because I don't know if we were actually going to do an episode on this sort of stuff um, and as we're dealing with the station and we've talked about the brake run and everything over the last couple of episodes it feels like it should be in there right so I've just added in the the CCTV just along the brake run just so that you can uh, just so that you can see it um, and then the rest is all just like all of the fine details. Now remember as well that the rest of this is going to come to life when you start decorating and doing the nature and everything around it. And of course your themes. So this doesn't account for the fact that you may actually use theming objects and items. You know this is a western area. You may be using the rope. You may be using uh, other ways to decorate it. Um, you know, there's lots of Western theming. So remember, all of that is going to bring this to life as well. This is just a, this was just an episode on how you configure your stations and not how you decorate them. So I really do hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, this has been quite a difficult episode to to actually pull together. Actually, it's been 
one of those episodes of it's a difficult topic to make interesting um particularly as the building of the station requires a lot of your imagination and a lot of your build i can just show you how it's configured so i really do hope that that's actually been helpful let me know let me know let me know down below um cool so that's everything thank you so much for watching <laughs> i don't know why i'm drawing this out <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. Uh, of course, you know that we've got different series running. So feel free to check out those. Um, subscribe if you want to know when the next Top Tips video comes. I often do a poll over on Facebook to know what the next topic is going to be. So watch out for that poll over on Facebook. But of course, until we speak again, please keep yourself safe. Bye bye for now.